Good morning. Welcome and happy Easter. We are so glad that you're with us today. Uh, for those who are members of All Saints, I love you and miss you. For those who are visiting, we're so glad to have you join us this morning, even if we can't be face to face. We are going to have our Easter service uh, beginning with an opening song that I know that you have been longing all throughout Lent to sing and say. Rick, our opening song is Alleluia. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give praise to the Paul's letter to the Colossians. 
chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. The Lord to you, Lord Christ. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The last three weeks have been a real challenge for many of us. Being shut up in our homes day after day, not being able to spend time with our friends or worship together as a church has been difficult. Of course, we all understand the necessity of it, and we pray for those who are sick and grieve for those who have died. We also applaud the heroic work of all those who are working selflessly and tirelessly to provide for us and to protect us. I hope that we can find some wonderful way to thank them when all of this is over. I watched the Ten Commandments the other night, all three and a half hours of it, and one of the things that struck me about it was how the Israelites had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years, never being able to settle down, never being able to make a home for themselves, always on the move, everything constantly changing all around them. And here we are facing 40 days, maybe more, of having just the opposite experience. We're forced to settle in our homes, to stay put, and not move around. But God used that time in the wilderness to shape his people and to teach them his ways. They grumbled and they messed up, but he remembered them and shepherded them through until they reached the other side. It's the same with us. God has lessons for us in this exile that we are experiencing. And he's with us until the storm of this pandemic rage everywhere around us is over and we too reach the other side. You know, God never wastes anything. We don't know why he has allowed this virus to unleash itself upon mankind. But we can know for sure that God is using this time to do some pretty remarkable things in our lives. For those who are not on the front lines of service right now, it's been a time to slow down and rest. We can't be as active and on the go as many of us are used to being. So it's an opportunity to practice what it says in Psalm 4610. Be still and know that I am God. We're having to learn about focusing on what is essential and letting go of all the rest. It means discerning between what's a need and what's a want and trusting God, remembering what it says in Philippians 4 13, that God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Jesus Christ. 
For families, it's provided an opportunity to spend more time together, with the ones that are under our roofs anyway, and to reach out maybe a bit more to those who aren't part of our households. This can be a chance to strengthen relationships and to mend any strained and broken ones. We all need more chances to learn what it says in Ephesians 4.32 about being kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. For parents, it's been an opportunity to spend more time with your children. You've been given the time to teach them things that can be important life lessons for them to learn. Proverbs 22.6 tells us, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. And we've also seen so many wonderful examples of people reaching out to help others. The news and the internet are full of stories of people finding selfless and creative ways of providing help and support and encouragement. I just watched a video this, this week of a priest, in, um, an Anglican priest in England, who set up a very loud speaker system on the street outside of his flat. And for the benefit of all of his neighbors on the street that he lives, he played a beautiful version of Amazing Grace. And while the song was playing, you could see people coming to their doorsteps and singing along. And he closed out that time with a word of prayer for them. It's really very beautiful. There are good things happening in this dark and uncertain time that we're living in. God's light and His glory are shining all around us, even in the midst of this disease that is threatening all of us and affecting so many. It should remind us of another dark time over 2,000 years ago when God's people were living in fear and uncertainty, hiding inside and afraid to venture out. The one that they loved and followed, Jesus, has just died on a Roman cross. He had been beaten and ridiculed and treated like a common criminal. And now his disciples were very fearful and confused. Yet during those dark three days of waiting, God was with him, and he was very much at work. And on the third day, the sun rose again, literally. The tomb was empty, and Jesus is alive. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah! And nothing was ever the same again. The lives of those men and women were forever transformed because Jesus lives. And the same is still true today. Every life that Jesus touches by grace through faith is forever changed. We become new creations that are redeemed from darkness and death. Colossians 1, 13 and 14 says that God has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. It serves to remind us that no matter how dark it gets, and no matter how uncertain the times, the sun has risen, and he will one day come again. All that he has redeemed, he will claim as his own for all eternity. So while we wait for that great day, we have the opportunity to find his hands at work in our midst, in our lives, and in our world. We have eyes to see his glory being displayed all around us. All we have to do is look. It's there. If this Easter morning finds you unsure about your faith, I want to join my voice with every preacher of the gospel across the globe today and tell you that Jesus loves you. That apart from him, there is no true life. There is no forgiveness of sin. And there is no hope of heaven. But with him, and in him, there is peace in every possible manifestation. Peace of mind, body, spirit, and soul. There's nothing that you have done that can keep him from loving you. And there is nothing that you must do except to accept him into your heart and into your life. That's all it takes. As Savior and Lord, he is alive and he is with us. And once you put your faith in him, his Spirit will come into your life and begin a work of transformation that will bring you wholeness and joy. Please pray with me. Jesus, I acknowledge that the punishment that you took upon the cross was for my sin, my rebellion against God and his rightful authority over me. Thank you for loving me so much 
that you would take, that, take what I alone deserve. I believe that you are truly risen and alive, and I place my faith and my trust in you. Come into my life and help me to live anew, in you and for you. I place my faith in your saving grace. Amen. 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 Please join me in prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our prayer. For Foley, our Archbishop. For Neil, our Bishop. And for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially Donald, our president, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We'll take a moment for you to add your own petitions here. Lord, we pray for all of those who have contracted this virus that you might bring healing to their bodies. We pray for all those who have lost loved ones to this disease, Lord, that you would comfort them as only you can. And we pray for all of the health care workers, the truck drivers, the people who are running grocery stores and, and having to keep their businesses open for the sake of others, Lord, that you would protect them and strengthen them in this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, we confess that we have, have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and in deed, in by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and with your spirit. Thank you. 
bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of heaven. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give him thanks and praise. It is our right and duty and joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world, who by his death has destroyed death, and by rising to life again has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you. Joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he gave given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which was shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully, we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, so that he may dwell in us and we in him. And bring us with all your saints into the fullness of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our the Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
For those who were not able to have communion elements to join us in um, this morning, I'm going to say, invite you to say along with me the prayer for spiritual communion. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to possess you within my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you, together with all your faithful people, gathered around every altar of your church. And I embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. All of our problems, we send to the cross of Christ. All of our difficulties, we send to the cross of Christ. All of the devil's works, we send to the cross of Christ. All of our hopes, we set on the risen Christ. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
much for your time for being with us this morning. Happy Easter to you and everyone in your home. I look forward to the day when we can greet each other face to face. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.